Good morning. Happy New Year to all of you. What a joy it is to gather with you. I am Jim Miller, the senior pastor here at Grace United Methodist Church. We gather in Gaithersburg, Maryland. To all who are joining us online, welcome. We're so glad that you are here. And to all who have made the journey out, we are grateful for your presence. If you would take a moment and just uh, sign the registration book and pass that along to the person beside you. And if you're on Zoom, if you'd put your name in the chat, we just want to celebrate the fact that you are here. Well, today we have much to celebrate in the life of the church. This being our first Sunday together in the new year, we are going to be celebrating both sacraments. There are two sacraments in the Protestant tradition of baptism and Holy Communion. This morning being the first Sunday of January, you will have an opportunity to remember your baptism, to touch the baptismal waters. Remember that you are a child of God, God's promise and presence in your life and we'll celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Do not worry, I'll give you instruction about our traffic flow, what we'll be doing and what's involved, but know you're welcome to receive and to celebrate this day, the fact that God is present. Much is happening in the life of the church. I hope you didn't have any uh, difficulty getting out today. Please be extra careful, and uh, we, our event that we had planned on yesterday, our symposium, will be held this coming Saturday. So we're going to gather for our men's breakfast at 8, followed by our Dr. Kaz Kawada Symposium at 9.30, where we will focus on our mission, our outreach, both locally and globally. So there'll be much to learn. I hope you can come out and be part of the gathering. So again, we'll gather for our men's breakfast, and then we're going to have a lunch. My, I'm going to eat well next Saturday here as I think about this. But hey, I'm looking forward to it here, our journey together also want to remind you of our opportunities during the week. You saw the slides and invite you to visit our church website that will tell you more about what's happening in the life of the church. So with much to do, we take this time and I commend you for taking this time to begin the new year by worshiping God. Welcome to our service. Please join me now in our call to worship. In the beginning, God swept over waters, spoke light into existence, created day and night and called it good. As the days and nights of creation filled with life, God made humanity out of dirt to love and tend creation, to be loved and tended by God. As we lost our way, God sent Jesus, love incarnate, to show us the way back. On the day Jesus came to the banks of the Jordan River to be baptized, God declared, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Let us then follow Jesus into the waters, remembering our baptism, in which God claims us as beloved children, the family of God. Let us be in prayer. Holy God, eternal spirit, we thank you for baptizing us into one body in Jesus the Christ. Wash over us with your spirit that like Jesus, we may serve you in serving humanity. Baptize us with the fire of your truth through Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we join in singing Spirit Song, found on page 347 and on screen.
One thing I do not take for granted, and that is to have young children here at our worship service. Thanks be to God. I give thanks for our children's ministry, and this time would like to invite all our children to join me up front for this morning's children's message. Would you join me, please? Welcome, everyone. Please have, have a comfortable seat here on our floor. <laughs> How's everybody? Good. Did you have a good Christmas? Good. I hope you had a wonderful time. We did as well. I, so I missed being with you last Sunday. I know Deacon Helen had a wonderful message for you and just glad that we can be back together having our 8 and 1030 services. And uh, it's been back to school well as well, hasn't it, here? So we're in our, in our new routines here. Uh, what's this we have here? present. You opened all your presents, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm back on I, I did too, but uh, here we have a gift that's not opened yet. You did? Oh, he got cold? Oh. Oh, your mommy. <laughs> I've been threatened with that from time to time, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we have this unwrapped gift here. What should we do with it? Should I save it till next year? Wait till then? Or should I open it? I'm not supposed to shake them, are you? Now, would you help me open it? All right. Let's see. Oh, it's... What is it? Shells. Shells. Seashells of all things. Why would we get a gift of a seashell for Christmas? Well, what does a seashell remind you of? Thank you. What does a seashell remind you of here? Takes us to the beach, doesn't it? Warm beach right now sounds very good. We have some of our, our, our loved ones are in such places now, so we want to say hello and look forward to visiting you yes, in this winter weather. Sure, it reminds us of water. Well, why shells? Well, today in our worship service, we're going to be remembering our baptism. That is, we're looking at the story when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist with the water, which reminds us, like we think of water, as something that we wash with, we drink. It's something we need, isn't it? It's something we use. But here, as Jesus was baptized, it was symbolizing how God washes away our sin and how God gives us strength to live our lives. So today... We're going to remember our baptism. A baptism is God's promise to always be with us. Now, for some of you, like me, you may not remember your baptism. Thank you very much. Or maybe you haven't been baptized yet. But what we celebrate in this sacrament, it's called, is a special way that God meets us and is present for us. So today, I'm going to invite you to take a seashell with you. And I want you to keep it somewhere, maybe in your backpack, maybe on a table at home, somewhere where you'll see it daily, and it will be that reminder that Jesus is always with you. Unlike Christmas decorations or presents we may soon forget about or put away, the true joy of Christmas, Jesus being with us, is something that we can celebrate and know each and every day. And for this, we are thankful. So before I give you your show, Miss Laura is going to share with us where we're going from here. Okay, thank you. So thank much. you. We have nursery care for little, little ones. So we have wee little ones through preschool. And then we have Sunday school for elementary age children. And you're welcome to follow me down to the children's wing. Our nursery care is professional nursery care. And we have, as I said, a preschool program. So any children that would like to follow me, you're welcome to. You're also, of course, welcome to stay in service. And we have uh, our parlor there, which we lovingly also call the wiggle room for, for little wigglers that um, can't quite make it through the service. You are all welcome to, to use that space also. Thank you. Remember your back. Where my friend going? Oh, yeah. Here you go, sweetie. Oh, don't forget your friend here. Thank you. Thank you.
Please join me in this time of prayer. In the waters of baptism, we were made God's children and called to serve one another as we have been served by Christ. Therefore, let us pray for one another and for all people who will not or cannot pray for themselves. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that in your mercy you brought us to baptism and there gave us Jesus' holiness in exchange for our sin and impurity. Thank you for our parents who brought us up in the faith and to baptism. Thank you for those other people whom you used to bring us the gospel. And thank you for our pastors and teachers in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the baptized people of God, that we may hang on to your promises in true faith, especially when we experience the wilderness of sin and evil within, and temptations and trials from outside. Strengthen us with your Holy Spirit, so that Jesus' victory may be our victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people, that the good news of Christ will be proclaimed and heard by all people, and that many will believe and be baptized. To this end, send and support pastors, missionaries, teachers, and lay people able to give truthful and loving witness to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on those in need, those who are struggling because of domestic violence and breakdown, those who are suffering from harmful behavior and hurting relationships. Heal, restore, and renew, dear Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, those who are disabled, those in hospital, those facing death. Show them the light of the gospel. Provide helpers and caregivers and medical resources and heal both body and soul. Be with those among us who are sick or recovering from surgery and others whom we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have shown us your love and salvation in the baptism of your Son. Accept these prayers of your children in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite all who are able to please stand as Amy shares with us our gospel lesson. Good morning. The gospel lesson this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with whom, with you I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Thank you, Amy. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we are grateful for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to remember. 
first and foremost, to remember that worship, fellowship, mission is to be all about you. And so we pray as we gather in this time that all that we say and receive and do will bring honor to you. That your same Holy Spirit that came down upon Jesus in the form of a dove will be upon us this day. Empower and use this time to your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I was reflecting over this past Advent Christmas season and our special times of gathering in this space. I am so grateful for those who who helped to decorate and de-decorate, how beautiful it was. So to Deb Randall and team who helped to decorate and de-decorate, to Kathy and BG for the beautiful tree in our entranceway, and to all the team members who helped, thank you so much. It just really enhanced, just really helped provide an environment for, for us to gather in and to worship and to just be reminded of what it was that we were celebrating. I am grateful for your efforts. Now, in my household, uh, we still have some Christmas decorations uh, around yet. Uh, I did take down the outside ones before the bad weather hit, so I was grateful to have done that. But the other pieces were, were still enjoying uh, for a while. But the one thing I was very intentional about was taking down our live Christmas tree. Uh, I'm the grandson of a fire chief, and so it was instilled in me at a very early age, you don't let that live tree linger very long there where it becomes a, a fire hazard. So the other day I was taking it down, and when I was doing that, I discovered a gift under the tree that had gone unnoticed and unopened. As I thought about that gift, I thought how easy it was for that to occur with all the, the busyness of the moment and the Christmas celebration. But how important it is that we pause and recognize the gift that we have been given in Jesus Christ. It's so easy when we pack away the decorations and when we put aside the busyness of the season. If we're not intentional about it, our relationship, our focus on Christ gets put away as well. We just as soon leave Jesus in that corner, that space of our lives with, to come out yet another season. But then we remember what it was. We celebrated God coming to earth, God present with us. Jesus, as we see in this gospel text, is at work in the world. I love how one colleague put it. God is on the loose in the world. What a difference that makes to think about our faith journey in that context. God is loose in this world. God is at work. And as baptized children of God, remembering our baptism, we are reminded we are part of this work. But we must be intentional. Why, it was easy to do even with this text. When I first looked at it and saw this reading from Mark, the first chapter, I thought, wait a minute, we covered that. We, we looked at John the baptizer back the second Sunday of Advent. It was very easy to say we've already done that, already been there. But then we would miss out on this powerful moment when Jesus comes to be baptized, when the heavens are torn open. Holy Spirit descends upon him in the form of a dove and God's voice speaks to him. You are my son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here is Jesus. In that moment, God speaking a fresh word. In the freshness and newness of this year, God has a word for each and every one of us. Let's not pack away the good news. Rather, may we allow God's word to continue to transform our lives. John the baptizer was calling for a baptism of forgiveness, of repentance, asking forgiveness. What we dare not forget or set aside, God wants us to know forgiveness. God wants to practice forgiveness in your life and in mine. 
God wants us to be cleansed and to start anew. Karl Barth, the great Swiss theologian, put it this way. He said, God's claiming of Jesus in this story summarizes the essence of the gospel. The astonishing claim that God does not will to remain hidden in the heights of heaven, but descends to the depths of earthly life in order to be seen and heard by us finite creatures. God wants to be heard and seen. God wants each and every one of us to see and be everything that God is calling us to. If that could be the commitment that we are renewed to this morning as a congregation, what a powerful difference this will make in the world. Here was Jesus coming to be baptized. There was nothing for him to be repenting of. He was the one without sin after all. Yet he comes to be in solidarity with us. When we recognize that, in a world in which we are so divided, in the year in which there will be a presidential election, where the divisions threaten to be even greater. It's just on the news this morning, a piece about how one side is fearing the other side's acts of violence if they lose. Talk about division. Baptism reminds us of what we have in common. That is God's love and desire to be in right relationship with all. James Mueller put it this way in talking about baptism. And he said the following. He said, baptism is a powerful force in the life of a Christian for two reasons. It's something we share in common. Christians all over the world can say that they were baptized in Christ. You met a Catholic in Ireland, he was baptized. You met a Pentecostal in Nigeria, she was baptized. The second reason baptism is a powerful force is that baptism takes us back to the basics. Now let me set these two ideas up for you with a couple of stories. You perhaps at one time or another have seen on TV the old black and white video footage of the civil rights marches in the 60s. Martin Luther King often at the front received his share of stinging high pressured water hoses. Reverend King once remarked that he and the other marchers had a common strength. He put it this way, as we went before the fire hoses, we had known water. If we were a Baptist or some other denomination, we had been immersed. If we were Methodist and some others, we had been sprinkled. But we knew water. You and I know the water. All of God's children know the water. We share by our faith this common symbol, this initiation, this right, this power of God over the deep and often raging chaos of life water all over the world. Baptism unites us. Baptism also calls us back to basics. As parents and teachers and leaders today, we would do well to remember that life is still composed of basics. That is why when Mark chose to open his gospel, he did so with the baptism of Jesus at the Jordan. Baptism reminds us of the three R's of the soul. Repentance, righteousness, and revelation. Imagine for us to come back to these basics today. Repentance, turning from our sin, knowing God's forgiveness, turning to the one who is righteous, allowing Christ to be at the center of our life and to be open, as one author put it, to imperial expectation to know Christ as the ruler in our lives means we are open, expecting God to guide us in new ways. Jesus didn't make it about himself. He didn't have to be baptized in that sense of repenting, but he did so that we can journey together and can know a life in completeness and fullness 
that only he can bring. And it's not something that will just affect you. Well, the gift that went unopened, we discovered, was a gift from my youngest daughter, Lauren, to my wife, Betsy. She opened it to discover it was a recipe book for our air fryer. New and wonderful dishes, it said, to discover. We got an air fryer a while back, so now we have this tool. Now, not only is this going to be Betsy's discovery and blessing, I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to experience these wonderful discoveries as well. So it is in Christ. So it is in the promise that we celebrate this day. It's not only about us, but rather it's our loved ones, our little ones, all of us as children of God. Jesus, what a blessing he experienced there in that moment when the heavens were torn open. The Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. And God's voice, and it may, he may have been the only one to have heard it. But God says, you are my son, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Imagine, imagine that moment and we see Jesus' work begins in powerful ways. What might it look like for us to remember as we come to the table this morning? You'll be invited to come down the aisle where you will pause and touch the water of baptism right there in the font. There's a shawl for you to take as a reminder to remember that you are a child of God and then to continue your journey to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, knowing that you will not have to face life alone, but rather God is your source of strength. One of my feeding tools that I use during Advent to help keep me centered was a devotional offered some time ago by Dietrich Bonhoeffer called God is in the Manger. It offered a daily reading. And I wanted to share this quote from Bonhoeffer with you. You know, he was the great German theologian who joined the resistance movement against Hitler, established an underground seminary during those days. Out of that experience, he wrote a book called The Cost of Discipleship. Maybe you've read it. It's a commentary on the Sermon on the Mount. In it, he makes the distinction between cheap grace and costly grace. <laughs> cheap grace is going to church to hear the comfortable words, the good news about God's unconditional love, then snuggling in it as if it were a down comforter, leaving church with a warm, peaceful feeling, but not letting the one who brought that love into the world, who died for you because of that love, challenge the way you are now living. In the Bible, Repentance is not just remorse for the past, feeling sorry that you did something. In the Bible, repentance is making a decision about the future, how you are going to live. It's the realization that God has given you a new opportunity for life and seizing that opportunity. This morning, we have such an opportunity to know life in its fullness because Christ has not gone away, but is at work in our world today. For us to seize that opportunity is to offer ourselves anew as we remember our baptism, as we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. God is at work in your life and mine, and may that work of transformation continue this day. Amen. And so with thanksgiving, in our hearts, we take this time to give back to God as we have our morning offering, and Trevor will bring us a special music.
just come from the fountain, I've just come from the fountain, Lord. I've just come from the fountain, his name so sweet. I've just come from the fountain, I've just come from the fountain, Lord. I've just come from the fountain, his name so sweet. Oh, brother, do you love Jesus? Yes, yes, I do love my Jesus. Brother, do you love Jesus? His name's so sweet. Oh, sister, do you love Jesus? Yes, yes, I do love my Jesus. Sister, do you love Jesus? His name's so sweet. Just come from the fountain, I've just come from the fountain, Lord. Just come from the fountain, his name so sweet. I've just come from the fountain, I've just come from the fountain, Lord. I've just come from the fountain, his name so sweet. Oh, sinner, do you love Jesus? Yes, yes, I do love my Jesus. Sinner, do you love Jesus? His name so sweet. Oh, preacher, do you love Jesus? Yes, yes, I do love my Jesus. Preacher, do you love Jesus? His name so sweet. Just come from the fountain, I've just come from the fountain, Lord. I've just come from the fountain, his name so sweet. I've just come from the fountain, I've just come from the fountain, Lord. I've just come from the fountain, his name so sweet. Thank you, Trevor, so much. And Betsy, thank you. I invite you to join me in this time of renewal. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we have been initiated into Christ's holy church. We've been incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and have been given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the public acknowledgement of faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us in Jesus Christ, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church in the way of discipleship. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and include one another in mutual care, love, and forgiveness and service to others? We will. Will you pray for one another and the world that we may be true disciples? who walk in the way that leads to life, we will. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascendeth into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant God. as members of the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. And Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. It's so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and upon these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This time, our worship leaders will guide you forward. Again, you're welcome to touch the water of baptism and take a shell, and then you'll be served communion right here. All elements are gluten-free, and we have the safety packets as well. We invite our servers to come forward.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day of renewal. Thank you for the reminder of the gift that continues to be with us each and every moment. Lord, help us, O God, to be and to see everything you want us to be and see. Thank you for being our king. Thank you for being the one who gives us the model of what it looks like to be a servant of yours. Lord, we thank you for opportunities to serve you. Thank you for opportunities to offer your love to those who are in need. And thank you for the reminder of this day that we are loved, valued, forgiven, and freed to live lives fully unto you. Our work, our forming and being community is needed now more than ever. With all that threatens to divide, we are reminded that your love is greater. Thank you for the reminders. Thank you for the opportunities of this new year to lead lives in our life together as a church that will bring glory to you. For those who are in need this day, we pray for your healing touch. For those who do not know, we don't stand in judgment. But rather, O oh God, may we see opportunity to work with, to walk with, to serve alongside that your love will become known and shared. For the personal concerns we carry and for the opportunities to fulfill our role in being part of the body of Christ, we thank you. Lord, we pray for all who are in leadership positions in this world. May campaigns not divide us. But rather, O oh God, in moments we feel ourselves distancing ourselves from others, help us to remember our baptism, what we hold in common. And that is you fearfully knitted each of us together in our mother's womb. You know us each by name and have a wonderful plan for our lives individually and our life together. May we honor it, O oh God, daily looking to you. And so we begin this quest as we have received this sacrament and we've been reminded of our baptism that you are our source of strength and you are seeking to work through us. We join now in offering together the prayer that you have given us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we join in singing our closing hymn, sent forth by God's blessing.
Be seated. My four-year-old granddaughter called me to say how excited she was. Santa gave her a bicycle for Christmas. I had to come over and see this new gift. Oh, it was a marvelous sight. But I can do more than that. They live in an apartment building, so there's not many opportunities to ride there but parking lot. I said, but you can bring your bike to our place, and we can ride together. I can provide you opportunity to enjoy this new gift. So it is in Christ. As the church, as God continues to touch lives, God gives us as a congregation the opportunity to welcome, to encourage, to grow in our faith and understanding and in our mission serving together to put into the practice the gifts that God has blessed us with. James Mueller, I quoted earlier, Kevin, and I, he continued in his quote that I wanted to share with you where he remarked on his children's baptisms in the following way. Mueller continues. I know. He said this, when I baptized my three children, I did a new generation kind of thing. We made a DVD for each of our kids so they can celebrate their baptism birthdays. They can see it. They can own it. We blow out the baptism candle. We open a baptism gift and we celebrate the new life Jesus brings to them. They can trust in God's work. There's a lot we can do to make a child's baptism just as personable and memorable as an adult's. The one thing we shouldn't do is to take this promise from our children they need it, and we need it. The world needs to know this promise that God has given us to always be with us and be our source of strength. And we need to remember that promise as well ourselves. So now as we go forth, as you go into the week ahead, may every water you touch be a reminder that you are named and claimed by God who binds you to this community of faith and all Christians of all times and places in love. Amen.